Welcome to another episode for Servus Crowd, Germany for non-Germans. And well, I was really debating what to talk about today. Should I be talking about the increasing COVID numbers again in Germany, but then we would have another COVID discussion. And let's be honest, we talk about COVID so much. Um, so that I decided to do something different, yet still somewhat related. If you follow German news, you might have seen that... Um, The German carnival season has kicked off again with lots of discussion in Germany because, again, highest COVID cases ever so far on a daily basis. And yet, um, carnival capitals such as Cologne, for example, did not cancel the carnival festivities. 11-11 is the start of the carnival season uh, in Germany and some cities take it more seriously than others, like Cologne, again, is the capital of carnival, so to speak, which... Let me to um, think that maybe it makes sense to talk about a few German traditions and customs and just explain why they are there and why they are so important to us. So I'm going to start with a few, with a few traditions that m might not be taken as serious as Carnival, for example, but we're getting there. And we're also going to talk about, well, since it's November already, we're going to talk about Christmas as well, of course. But... Let me start with one of my favorite things, um, a super German thing that I haven't seen necessarily in that form in other countries where I lived at least. So uh, we have something in Germany, Germany on the first day of school in, the, in your first year in school. Not every single year, but your first year in school, yeah, your first going to first grade, that's something super special. And we call it Schultüte. Schul comes from Schule, from school. Tüte comes from like bag. So it's basically a school bag. But it's like a gift. Um, like it's a paper plastic babe bag. And it's like in the shape of a, of a huge cone usually. So it's not just a bag. It's like a big cone. And parents or family gives it to their children on the very first day of school. Right, The day like you leave kindergarten and you go to first grade for the first time. It's like to, to help them overcome anxiety and so on. Right, It's super cool. Um, I, I still remember my mind was like, glittery blue <laughs> with a with a with a cartoon dog on it and i was six years old when i when i got it right so that's, that's the age you usually go to first grade in germany and there was just some sweets in there that you like i think i had like some haribos in there and it's usually like small gifts like i had something from playmobil in there if you know playmobil it's like some similar to lego 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 however you pronounce it lego so i had playmobil on there um like probably some police stuff or something like this um so that, this was like my school to my my school bag on the first day of school and i i haven't seen this in any other country where i lived so far and i lived in a few countries and i have yeah you get some presents and something like hey congratulations but not really like this 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 cone thingy <laughs> um that really looks looks ridiculous actually and i have no cl clue why it's a cone maybe back then in the 19th century when they established it that was the common form i don't know like it's easy it's nice to hold it looks good on pictures even though in the 19th century they wouldn't have taken pictures anyways it's a cool thing and it makes the makes the kids happy um well yeah I, i'm just going through my my list uh, that i noted down earlier like just just randomly so um December is coming close. New Year's is coming close. And what, are Germans, what do Germans do on New Year's Eve besides fireworks? And I hope we're cutting down on that already. But we watch Dinner for One. And the thing is, Dinner for One is like a black and white comedy sketch from the 60s. And it's in English. It's an English comedy sketch. The thing is, however, that it became really famous in Germany, not really in England. I think they probably know it by now, but it's really, really super successful in Germany. It's, it's 11 minutes, super successful. It's on all the channels, on all on all the I know governmental governmentally financed channels, I believe. Um, it's 11 minutes, and every channel plays it on New Year's Eve. It's ridiculous. Not not at the same time, so it's not like a cult. Don't worry. But like at some point of the day, you will be able to watch a dinner for one, and it's always the same thing. Uh, so if you want to impress if, if you want to impress a German friend, just just use one quote from that that show. It's like it's the same procedure as last year, James. And then James, it's, it's so it's it's like a, a a rich wealthy old lady. She hosts a dinner. I'm not gonna take away the joke, but she always uh, she has dinner, and then her butler James asks, 
the same procedure as last year, madam. And then madam answered with the same procedure as every year, James. And it's like the ongoing running gag, so to speak. If you watch it, you will understand it, of course. The sketch, I think I looked it up, has the world record for most frequently repeated TV programs in the world. And it has never been aired in the UK or the US. I mean, you guys might have seen it on YouTube and so on, but it's never been officially aired. And it's, a, it's in English and it's like supposed to be from England. <laughs> it's English actors, British actors. It's ridiculous. It's, I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but it is, this, is, this is definitely a German tradition that we, that we still do to this day. Another thing that Germans do when there are things to celebrate, being that New Year, but New Year is obvious, but also birthdays and whatever, is we do something that is called, um, in German, Rheinfeiern. Rheinfeiern means you party into something, meaning if your birthday is tomorrow, let's do Rheinfeiern, meaning we start today and we party into tomorrow. Why? So that, that we have the most of it from, from your birthday. Like, because the clock strikes 12, it's your birthday, all your friends are with you, we're going to celebrate. I now lived abroad for, for a while, as I mentioned a few times. And yes, yeah, sometimes you party into, but just by chance, but it's not really a, a thing. Thing, at least I haven't, I haven't learned it or I haven't seen it. And especially now here in Thailand, it's like not a thing at all um, that people party into your birthday for example while right? in germany we've done it all the time like and it's just it's just normal that you party into your birthday so maybe there's also something typical german if, if not let me know but i in all the countries i lived in so far i haven't really encountered that like on purpose the party interest thing okay well let's let's talk about let's talk about the thing that i mentioned in the intro let's talk about carnival right first of all on a personal note i hate it it's the worst thing ever it's the worst festival ever invented in germany carnival it's not like the carnival in rio de janeiro it's like terrible costumes like no really dressed up like halloween style almost right so it's it's ridiculous and they're like huge stages with carnival's music like, duh, duh, like those terrible terrible old songs like those uftada music kind of thing comes out on carnival um, where I come from, we don't kind of call it carnival, we call it fashing, still the same thing. There's even a, there's even a, a, a holiday, it's like Rose Monday, Rosenmontag, um, where, where like it's, it's a holiday for like those, those carnival crazy people. They will take, they, it's not an official holiday, but they will take a day off just to go there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so, uh, and the Rosenmontag is all, is, it is somewhat religiously related because it's, um, I think, oh my God, and uh, now you can see that I'm not in the church anymore. Um, but I think it's two days before Ash Wednesday. It makes sense because it's Monday. Um, and the carnival is mostly celebrated in like, in like north, in, in the western part of Germany, like Cologne, Mainz, Düsseldorf. Um, yeah, other, like in Bavaria, where I'm from, it's also a thing not as big as in maybe those regions but still it's been celebrated with like with like parades and stuff it's terrible it's terrible it's terrible but it's very important for many people and shout out to my mom who actually works in a costume shop in germany so uh, it's definitely good for my mom's business so guys uh, buy as many costumes as you can support my mom all right um what else do we have in germany um well you wouldn't, you wouldn't think about it when you think about Germans because we're, we're not famous for our rhythm. <laughs> but d there's a thing called Tanz in den Mai, Dance into May. So it's on April 30th, obviously, and you dance into the May. And it, that, that, that's like um, famous like for like of, from Walpurgis Nacht, which is like the witch's night, uh, which was the night to get rid of evil spirits and so on. Um, and now these days, like lots of bars and uh, pubs and clubs and host like dance into the May events. It's also like very famous too, if you like live, don't live in a city, but like in, in villages and smaller towns, like how I grew up and uh, you, you go outside and you meet at a bonfire, for example, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, it's also nice because May 1st is a labor day. So it's a day off. So you can dance into the May and then the next day is off anyways. If you're in Berlin, though, <laughs> and I'm laughing in Berlin, you, you might, 
your day off might turn out to be like a bit stressful because Berlin is very famous for having uh, demonstrations on May 1st, especially in Kreuzberg, which is like an area of uh, Berlin, um, where there's usually festivals, but I think, was it this year? Was it last year? I forgot when they also then, then like they even turned um, the street festivals into like some, some, I know, I don't, I don't want to say like, it wasn't that terrible, but they, they, they kind of, I know I saw pictures, images uh, in the news where, where those festivals also turned a little bit hostile, I, I'm going to say, but the demonstrations usually aren't, but the festivals are, but still lots of, lots of demonstrations usually in uh, Berlin on that day. And if you're in Berlin on the day, make sure that your car is somewhere safe. And speaking of dancing, right, um, there's also a thing that we have a dancing ban in Germany. You would think that dancing has always been banned in Germany if you, if you watch Germans dance. But actually, um, dancing there's a dancing ban um, on Good Friday, for example. I'm just leaving it there. Yeah, so Good Friday is a dancing ban. <laughs> So then there's, there's no public parties or anything allowed and um, you have to stop um, dancing, partying then on the day. But I think that's also happen that also happens in um, other areas of the world. When I live in Australia, I think we also encountered it there that then the pub shut down, for example. Uh, so that, that's, that's that. Um, what else? Well, one thing that we Germans do a lot is also and we, we're, we're really heavy on opening windows all the freaking time <laughs> if you're a kid and you grow up with like traditional parents like they open the windows all the time you're like what the hell it's cold outside and no we call it frisch luft frisch meaning fresh luft means air so it's like we're like frisch luft fresh air fanatics like i think germans have like this <laughs> and i don't want to make the, j the joke but you can imagine where this comes from that people are afraid of suffocating so they i think germans are just afraid of suffocating or something so they open windows all the time my grandma now is like almost 90 years old she sleeps with an open window come hell or high water no matter how cold it is outside she goes to bed she opens the window because it's healthy apparently that's what old people think i still think it's more healthy to not freeze to death while you're sleeping <laughs> but Kind of like 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 cryotherapy or something in your sleep, um, but it's it's a big thing like opening uh, windows and stuff. Uh, also, a big thing for me. I have my I had my window open also before I recorded here. But while living in Thailand, especially in Bangkok, I realized that closing the window very often is the better option, <laughs> uh, pollution wise. But in Germany, windows are being opened all the time. We are like fresh air fanatics. It's it's insane. Um, what else do we have in Germany? Let me think. Well. Okay, so more like holidays, right? So we have the Three Kings Day. We call it Drei Königstag, the Holy Three Kings, Heilige Drei Könige. Um, but it's lots of nations celebra celebrated. Like on January 6th, it's the Holy, uh, the Holy Three Kings. Um, yeah, but it's just a bigger thing here in, uh, here in Germany, I think, than in other countries. But other countries also, of course, uh, celebrate, celebrate that when the Three Kings um, arrived in, in Bethlehem. Um, Easter, Easter holidays, Ostern, that's how we call it, is also quite big, actually. I think it's the biggest, uh, second biggest Christian holiday that we have. Um, we're hiding like Easter eggs, Easter baskets, Easter chocolate, like chocolate eggs and so on. You hide it and your kids or kids have to try to find like small gifts and the chocolate and so on. Um, if you're living like in the, like again, not in big cities, but like in towns and villages, you might also come across the, um, asparagus festivals because um, white asparagus is pretty famous in germany i hate it um and there are lots of asparagus festivals then uh, in germany during asparagus time asparagus season um yeah well I, i'm not gonna talk about the oktoberfest now i think because that's what you're all familiar with i talk about one that, that i found nowhere else actually um saint saint martin's day uh martin's tag uh Saint Martin is a very popular saint in Germany, and it's very much celebrated. Like it's a it's a festival for for the young kids, and I think more again more um, more celebrated probably like in towns and villages rather than in 
big cities. However, I do know people who grew up in Berlin who also celebrated. And usually, you walk around with your with kids, with your school class, with your friends, with your parents. You have like a, a lantern in your hand, and then you walk around. You're shining a light, and you you're singing like I'm going with my lantern, and my lantern goes with me up there. The stars are shining down there. It uh, it's me or something like that. <laughs> in Germany, it rhymes better. Um, so that's what you do on, Ma on St. Martin's Day. All right, since, since Christmas is coming close, let's talk about Christmas. Christmas is important, of course. Um, I mean, Germany is a Christian country somewhat, uh, so Christmas is, is pretty important. And um, so what we do in order to celebrate Christmas is, first of all, you have to know that we celebrate Christmas already a little bit before Christmas. It's not Christmas itself, but it's St. Nicholas Day. Yeah, we call it Nikolaus in Germany, Nikolaus Tag. It's December 6th, so on the night of December 5th to 6th, uh, kids clean and polish their boots, usually their, their, their shoes, leave them outside, and then in the morning when they wake up, there's something in those boots, like a small present, a little bit of chocolate, and so on. So it's kind of like our Santa Claus. But Santa Claus in the US, I know it's like the guy who brings all the presents in Germany, He St. Nikolaus is St. Nicholas is the guy who comes on December 6th, leaves a little bit of small stuff uh, for you. It's not an official holiday, but you wake up in the morning, you open the door, you have to go to school, to work, if you still keep it up when, you, when you're older, and you see just a little gift in your, in your shoe, and you're like, yeah, cool, thank you, St. Nicholas. So it's really important, and it really saddens me that I don't have that anymore ever since I left Germany because I'm like, hey, it's December 6th and no, no one cares here. It's really sad. So I think that's a really cute, nice tradition in Germany. Um, we also, something else we have for Christmas is the, what we call Advent calendar. So it's a calendar that has 24 doors on it. Usually you open one door each day and then there's a little bit of chocolate in there, for example. And on December 6th, there's usually a picture of Saint Nicholas on there, and it's a little bit bigger than the other than the other doors, except the 24th of December. And you open it; it's usually a, a chocolate image of Saint Nicholas, for example, in there. So this advent calendar also slowly, I think, uh, finds its way in different countries. I even see it here also in uh, in Thailand. So I, I when I when I can, very often they're sold out. I get an advent calendar here. As well, so advent calendars are really important, uh, and in Germany, I think they're way bigger than in, in any other country that I've been so far. And we also have advent wreaths, we call it advent kranz. Um, so we put like four, usually four candles together, either in a row or like in a in a circle, uh, in a wreath. And then every Sunday of December, it's like. At Sunday is Advent, so it's at the first of Advent, second Advent, third, and then the fourth of Advent is uh, Christmas. So you light one more candle each Sunday. It's like a very typical German tradition. We also have um, what we call the Sternsinger, Star Singers. Um, usually um, they are from the church usually and they go from house to house and they're, they're singing Christmas songs and then they get some donations or something and for, for the church and so on. What's also important is, of course, Christmas markets. We call them Weihnachtsmärkte. It's the German word. So Christmas markets and Christmas markets are a huge deal in, in Germany, like really big. Um, every town, city, village has a Christmas market. It's where you go with your friends, your family to, to chill, hang out when it's cold, get something hot to drink and it's very famous uh, thing to drink is glue wine glue wine actually literally you would translate it with like glow wine but i think it's called malt wine if i'm not mistaken in english so um it's what you drink there it's like steaming hot and i've been told from friends and i usually don't drink alcohol so i believe them they say it's very very strong compared to their respective home countries to the drinks that you get on christmas markets there apparently German uh, glue wine, mild wine is apparently very, very strong. Um, yeah, so we also have like Christmas angels. I think they're also um, in other countries, of course, but also in Germany. And when you when you um, put up a Christmas tree, then those ornaments are like pretty important and they have like different meanings and so on. So my, um, that's also something that especially more traditional traditional uh, households will 
look into. Another famous thing is the Christmas Stollen in Germany, like this famous mixture between bread and cake. <laughs> it's like this German Christmas cake you might be uh, able to buy in like your local German bakery. It's really famous. It's also um, here famous here in, in, in Thailand. It's always sold out when the bakeries have it. I never really liked it. Um, I don't like the the the, the raisins in there. Um, but other than that, it's, it's really delicious. And you should definitely try it. What else? We also have a Lebkuchen, of course, which is a typical German Christmas treat. It's like similar to gingerbread, but not exactly way better than gingerbread. I don't like gingerbread. Way better than, better than gingerbread. Not as, as sweet, I think. Um, you've got in there, like I think, honey, lots of spices, some nuts, and uh, some are soft, some are hard. There are different kinds of Lebkuchen. Um, I'm not the biggest sweet tooth, but during Christmas, you gotta eat Lebkuchen, of course. Um, that's, that's just what you have to do. Okay, lastly, to wrap things up, Christmas is on the 24th of December. <laughs> yes, so in Germany, we celebrate Christmas on the 24th of December, while on the 25th and 26th are holidays. And the 24th, usually it's not a holiday, it's not a public holiday. Usually, companies give you like half a day off or so. So you, you work until like noon or 1 p.m. and then you do like your last shopping for like the food that you need or whatever and then you go home and then you meet with your family you finish the christmas tree and so on and then on the, the in the evening we don't have santa claus it's the christ child that is coming it's like this this angel the christmas angel basically is coming to bring our presents so usually it works like you you decorate the tree and so on and then your parents kick you out of the living room they're like let's get out like, we need to give the christmas angel some space and then you hear like a bell ringing like bing, 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 bing. And when the bell rings like oh, it's the christmas angel and then you run into the living room you see an open window you're like oh no i didn't catch the christmas angel again but then All the Christmas presents are under the Christmas tree. And then that's where the family gathers, sings Christmas songs. Um, usually you have dinner before and then you just sit around the tree. The kids open open the presents and you have a good time. And then you sleep sleep into the 25th. Um, that's the first holiday. That's then usually where you see grandma, grandpa and so on. And the 26th is also a holiday. But it's then where you, where you usually chill with friends and, and the like. So that's, that's how we celebrate Christmas in Germany. And I think that's enough information because there was quite a lot of traditions, uh, quite a lot of German traditions for you guys. So enough of that this time around. And I will keep debating whether or not I go back into the Corona COVID talk for Germany or if I do something more lighthearted again next time around. I hope you learned something uh, from today's episode of Servus Crowd Germany for Non-Germans. If you did, I would uh, really appreciate it if you like this podcast if you subscribe to it if you rate it give a give some feedback give some uh, rating there that really helps be found i appreciate it very much thank you very much guys uh, as always stay safe take care and servus <laughs> <laughs>